Okay, hey everyone. Uh, to, today I'm going to go over, today's November, what is it, 25th. Uh, I'm going to go over the MLA format style review, as you can see here. Uh, this will help inform us uh, for the test. I think it's 20 to 25 question multiple choice test, which is on Wednesday, which is what, uh, 27th. Uh, so in a couple days. You have all day to take the test, right? You can walk away from it, come back, walk away, come back. I don't know why most people choose uh, to do it, but some people have chosen in the path not to for some reason. All right, so just bear that in mind. So pretty straightforward stuff. No curveballs here. What is the – everything we covered this semester, right, in terms of modern language association formatting style. What does the acronym MLA stand for? It's not really an acronym. It's abbreviation. So answer modern language association. That's a simple one. Some of these are kind of difficult. Some of these have multiple answers. Uh, but I'll take uh, one answer, you know, if you choose uh, the right one. Uh, when documenting the author in references in a text, which is correct. So, looks like A is correct. You get the author's last name, page number. No pay, no, you don't put any language in there like PP for page or any comma or any year, right? That's APA, this is MLA. Important. I'm still getting essays with uh, formatted with APA or a hybrid, which is wrong. This is a comma, so we know it's automatically wrong on B. This is wrong because the punctuation comes here as opposed to here, right? And this is wrong because of the comma. So A is the right answer. Fry one nine seven, which stands for page, right? When documenting one author by name in a text, which is correct, Fry has argued this point before. So there's two right answers to this one. I'm not going to gig you for any points if you mention, if you oversight, right? In this example, A, they're oversighting. They're saying Fry has argued, they're setting up, you know, the according to the attribution, according to Fry, who has argued his point before, right? And then they give Fry into the, in the uh, last name of the author in the in-text citation, which is fine, right? Uh, this is wrong because we have the punctuation here on B and punctuation here, so that's incorrect. This is wrong, so we have a comma. We know we don't do that in in-text, in MLA, formatting style. And then D is correct, because they set up the author, so you don't have no need to mention the author. Although, I will take A or D for the correct answer, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, true, false. You should not use the author's last name in the citation if the author's name is appear in the text. So we saw that in the prior one. Y you could set up the, the uh, quote, the direct quote you're using or the paraphrase using the author's last name in the prior example with Fry, right? Um, if you do set it up, you don't have to use it necessarily in the in-text, although I'll allow both. So if you said to me, according to Fry, who said that quote-unquote, you know, uh, the human species is on a collision course for destruction by the year 30,080, Right, and then in the text citation you put Fry page 197. I'd be okay with that. Right, give me more rather than less. Right, in terms of citation. True, false. You should use at all when you're citing a text with more than three authors. That's correct. That is true. Right, remember at all should have a com or a period after al for all. Um, if you remember it, if you have three or more authors that you're citing, right, you don't want to list. Hey, this is a According to Johansson, Jackson, and Johnson, uh, and, and Smith, the human uh, condition is going to end in 30,000 years, 80, right? <clears throat> Instead of listing all those authors in MLA formatting style, we'd like to cut it down and trim it down, right? Pare it down to, say, one author, the first author, right? According to Fry, you know, the human species is going to die in 30,000 years, P uh, end quote. Uh so, but you must on the work cited page, your work cited page, very important, not reference page, work cited page, you must list all the at all authors in the, on that citation entry. True, false, when you use quotations in the text, you place the citation before the last quotation mark. That's incorrect. That seems confusing, but it just means that you close your quote, right, on your direct quote. So, according to Mike Johnson, quote, humans are going to die in 30,000 years, unquote. Then you put the in-text citation. Then you put the punctuation after that. Although that would be redundant, but I'm okay with redundancy. Uh, true, false. You should only use block quotes when quoting m for more than four lines. 
of text. Bear in mind that's not sentences. These are all multiple choice on the actual test. Um, so it's not sentences. Please bear that in mind, specifically. Uh, it's four lines. Just count one, two, three, four. Right. If that's the amount of quoting you're going to do, or more than that, use a block quote. I've seen that a couple times on the uh, argumentative essay this semester uh, for a number of individuals where these, they incorporate a block quote. That's great. That's wonderful as a utility for writing a, an essay. Uh, but they fail to use the block quote format. Right. So you have to. And we're going to see that in a moment. What that actually requires. Here. To, uh, yeah. Here. This, which of the following is true about a block quote? So if you if you sit down and write your essay and you said oh, I got this great quote. You know, I found out there it has everything to do to underscore my um, uh, thesis statement within my essay, which is what the essay is about, right? And uh, I really want to include it. I don't want to pare it down to one or two quotes. I want to have a gigantic quote. Fine. Use it with great economy, meaning don't use it often, because at that point, if you do two or three of those, it writes your essay for you. We don't want to do that. We want to hear your voice within the essay. But if you have to use a block quote, do the following. A, this is all the above, by the way. Uh, the entire block quote is indented, that's correct, indented to the right, one more than a regular indentation of a paragraph. Only use, uh, use when author is mentioned in the text, correct, so we always set up the author and then a colon uh, for a block quote. So according to Mike Johnson, colon, hit enter, tab over twice, then start your block quote without quotation marks. Uh, this is how it differs from a direct quote, it has no quotation marks. Page number at end is outside the period. If you have a page number, yes, this could be outside the period on a block quote. And quotation marks are not used. That's correct. So all the above, E. There you go. Uh, which is the correct way to cite a website? This one's kind of confusing, but I'll lay it out for you here. Both is the answer. Uh, one could be sort of debated. A. Uh, can be debated, but B is definitely correct according to the Modern Language Association. This is an example of a quote, a uh, paraphrase rather here, uh, with the website. MLA was founded in 1883. All right, so this is glance over these. These are both correct. You mentioned the website in the setup, so it's fine. You don't have to mention it anywhere else. Uh, so here's a difficult area that I think we've faced all semester long, and that's fine. Typically, people grapple with this idea. They go back and forth with what they're able to do. Uh, with the work side, you can always email me if you want to understand what how the entry should look on your work side page for your final essay, this research essay. Uh, so, which is true of a work side page? Circle all the apply. Uh, let's see. Starts a new page number sequentially. Yes. So, your work side has to be outside the purview of whatever is the threshold for that essay. So say the essay was, for your final essay, it's, it's um, five to seven pages for your research essay. So if, say, you do five pages at the minimum for your research essay, sequentially, in sequence, the work side should be the sixth page, right? If you do seven pages, the work side should be the eighth page. And by the way, you don't have to stick to those, that pagination. It can go, it, you could exceed seven pages on your uh, research paper. Go as far as you want. I mean, anything short of a, say, a dissertation, right? Which is typically minimal, 30 pages. Um, yeah. No subheadings, right? No subheadings, no pictures. I've had those in the past. It's odd. One would include that. All right, start new page number sequentially. So yeah, work side should be on, on its own page always. Uh, the page is not numbered. That's false. It should be mumber, numbered. The work side of page should be with your last name at the top right with the page number uh, and the space between. Uh, see, place after the body of the paper. That's correct. It is. Work side it comes after everything, right? Uh, e, include all quotes, paraphrases, and summarize sources. That's correct. You should. Give me all your sources uh, on your work side of page where you got your information, right? Uh, F, do not include, sorry, do not need to include sources or titles of use in, in, in the text. No, you still were, list all your sources on the works side of page, despite the fact that you might list it within the text itself, the attribution, right? According to Zonzo, who wrote about this, X, Y, and Z, and there are, there are authority in this field for this reason. You still want to include the entry on your works side of page. Uh, G, start each entry on a new line, regular left margin. Yes, this is both true and false. So you should start an, your each entry on a new line on your works cited page, but it should have a hanging indent. I had to make a number of uh, comments on individuals' uh, essays for the argument of essay where they didn't give the hanging indent uh, per entry on the works cited page. 
Uh, J. Oh, sorry. Uh, H. Font type should be different than the body of the paper. No, that's not true. So I'll be all, everything you type within English essay, within this classroom or an English essay moving forward in any English uh, composition class or English based class, right? Uh, it should be written in Times in Roman, twelve point font. Uh, I indent the second in all subsequent lines, five spaces, hanging indent, that's correct. J, margin should be set at 1.5 all around. Uh, that's false, it should be one inch. I'm not going to take a roller, but it should be one inch all around. Uh, double space all lines, that's correct. Everything, even your work side has to be double space. All your headers, double space. Double space all lines, J, K, that's correct. Do not include websites because they do not count as horses. They do count as horses, and they're emphatically... They count as sources, right? So include websites on your uh, the last part of the entry on a works cited page. Email me if you have any questions about that. And M alphabetize all the authors' last names, book title, and websites on on the uh, works cited page. Correct. Right. So the in the event you have an author, alphabetize that entry on the works cited page by the author's last name, comma, first name, period. Right. Then the title of the article or book. Right. In italicies, depending on what it is. If it's a book, it's italicies. If it's an article, it's a quotation mark on the works cited page, as well as in the in-text side, as well as any time you mention it in the body of the essay itself. Email if you have any questions about that. Book versus article. How it's formatted. Oh, okay. so in the event you don't have an author, you list the the um, title of the article, right, on the in-text citation and, and on the entry on the works cited page. Email me if you have any questions about that. That's confusing. I get it. Uh, you can email me. I can, I can clear it up. Uh, true, false. Authors' last names are listed alphabetically in reverse order on the work cited page. So, what they mean by reverse order? What I mean by here when I created this was, uh, if it's Jeremy Jackson that you're quoting, it should be Jackson, comma Jeremy, period, on the work cited page, just in reverse order. And that's that is true, by the way. Yes, true. You should capitalize every major. I'll qualify that every major word in a title. That means also the title of your essay. Right. If say you have your essay is called uh, obesity colon the epidemic in America, right? Every major word in that title should be capitalized. True, false. Quotation marks should be placed around titles of shorter works. That's correct. Articles, poems, short stories, essays, chapters as well. Titles of chapters should be quotation marked, not italicized. The bigger thing is italicies. The book, the website title is italicies. Those two things. Um, true, false. MLA prefers Times New Roman. That's correct. We just said that before. It's a review. Times New Roman, 12 point font. Right? Always, always, everything within an essay has to be Times New Roman, 12 point font. I mean, don't do it. That's fine. You get a couple points. Okay, let's see. Alphabetize, true, false. Alphabetize your works cited page, including A is an and, or the T as the first word of a title. That's correct. So, if you have an article that you have no author for, right, called The Human Condition, 2023, 2024, right, the T within the of The Human Condition 2024 will be uh, alphabetized according to its T status, right, of the alphabet. An A with an N as well, or A with an A. I would say this, too, uh, going off the last slide, is... um. If you have a, a number, this is rare, but if you have a number that leads, someone had this in, in the last class. If you have a number that leads one of your entries in your works cited page, say 48. 48 is the new 50 or new 30, something like that. 48, because it leads, the, it's a num number, numeral, 48, not the spelled out 48. All right, you push it to the very bottom if you have a number that leads your entry. Uh, let's see, let's read here. On the sample works cited page shown below, indicate which type of source, book, article, publication, website, etc. Each entry represents. Okay, so th we have a couple of these. This looks like a title website. I can see the URL here. I can see the year. I can see the in italicies the name of the uh, website. It did not have an article. It looks like on the website they couldn't find. Otherwise, it'd be quotation mark right here. So American Association for uh, Artificial Intelligence. Great, wonderful. Uh, Bernstein, Barton J. Looks like an article. Right, it's italic or sorry, it's quotation marks as an article. I've got the author, wonderful, looks like an author of an, and then this is the publication, 
in italicis diplomatic history. You get the page number range 126 to 129. So notice if you're doing a range of pages, you could do 126, and they don't list the one for 129. Just do 29. We assume that's 126 to 129, right? You can leave out that one. Chicago man, that's that's a okay. Some of these are from. Uh, uh, TV shows, late night TV shows. Stephen Colbert, his homepage, obviously he didn't have a name, um, but you get the URL, which is good. Crane, Niles, right? So the author, name of the episode, or this is the name of the article, rather, and then this is Atlanta Monthly, so we know it's a periodical, right? So monthly says it's periodical, it's once a month, right? But that's, see, this is the name of the uh, smaller thing, which is the article within the bigger thing, which is italicized. Smaller thing, quotation mark, bigger thing, italicized. Always. Uh, creation of the media, political origins of the media, Los Angeles. Okay, I see the year, 1922, kind of antiquated. Uh, name of the article. Oh, it's a book. This is a book. Houghton Millen. Okay. Houghton Milton. That, yeah, book. Yep, everything's italicized. It's the name of a book. Hanging in that, important for the entry on the work side of page, four men, Red, Elizabeth Bennett, and Tom Collins, in forecasting their emotions. Looks like it's an article on the New York Times. Right? You can tell by that by the New York Times. Article title, smaller thing, right? New York Times italicized, bigger thing, New York, or the article title, quotation mark, because it's smaller. Jackson Gabriel, so that's the author, this is the article. Title, Multiple Histor uh, Historical Meanings of the Spanish Civil War. Unquote, Science and Society, that's the bigger thing it came from, so it's italicized. Came from a database, I know that, just personally from EBSCOhost, which is a great database to use. We have it. Page range, so four pages, 272 to 776. Great. Web address, URL, perfect. Hanging in that, great. Kramer, a health, this is the author. Health threat baffling for its lack of a pattern. New York Times is italicized. The smaller thing that came from the New York Times, the article title is, is quotation marked, perfect. You get the, actually with newspapers, you get the section, which is A, page 14, section A, right? So newspapers have typically three or four sections, A, B, and C, maybe D. All right, J P Peterson, J, great, author, title of the article, eat this now. And then the where it came from. Whoop, sorry, skip one. Same thing with this one. Two authors, great. Last names first. And then the second one, you notice that the first name comes first. That's fine. Psychology of Women is the title of the article. Smaller, so it's quotation marked. And the bigger thing that came from Journal of the American Psych Psych Atlantic Analytic Association is uh, italicized. Vandalay. Art Vandalay. So that's the author. Seinfeld, the show about nothing. So New York Times book, italicized. All books are italicized. That's how I know it's a book. And then seeing Penguin books helps too. I think we're good. Great. All right. So listen, um, the test is giving multiple choice. Is I'm just going to uh, reiterate what I uh, from the outset of this lecture. The test is 25 questions. I think maybe 20, 20, 20 to 25. I can't re recall from last semester. I edited a few or took away a few. Um, multiple choice. You can go start it and walk away, come back. All right? You have 24 hours to do it, so it's no problem. It's going to be on uh, today's Monday, so it's going to be Wednesday. All right? And then we're we'll pick back up on uh, Friday for the um, the research essay, your final essay. Okay, guys? Everybody's doing well, it seems like. And we appreciate you. Email me, of course. If you have any questions, talk to you later. Bye.